hey, you know what you're here for. Get down to review. Why us? So, let me indulge you. What's up, guys? So, so happy to be here with you guys. And thank you. Thank you to all my subscribers, all my supporters, all my new subscribers that are jumping into my shorts. I really do appreciate you. And I appreciate you being here. I love to be able to share my joy with playing with these beautiful pieces of art, which are katana, swords, knives, whatever blades I have in my hand. I have a shitload of fun playing with them and sharing them with you. And if there's any goal that I have in doing these videos, it's to entertain you, to let you know what's out there, to let you know how beautiful and functional these pieces are, to let you know uh, what is in the marketplace, and possibly if you're in the market to buy a katana, maybe I can help you with the information that I give you uh, within these reviews to help you make a decision on which is the best sword for you, best starter sword, or best additional sword to kind of increase your collection, whether you be a collector, a practitioner, or just someone who thinks that katana just so mad freaking cool like I do. So thank you for sharing these videos with me. Thank you for allowing me to share these videos with you. And I hope they're entertaining and I hope they're detailed and you get a lot out of them. So guys, this is a Bizer Sword or actually a new name. I think they're renaming their company to Cloud Hammer. So let's call it Cloud. I don't know what I should call it. Bizer, Cloud Hammer. We'll call it Bizer for this video. But just so you know, the name is going to be changed to Cloud Hammer. So right now it's like Bizer slash Cloud Hammer or something like that. But we're going to call it a visor sword. And I just want to thank also RVA Katana gave me this as a sample. And John from RVA Katana is a direct supplier for visor cloud hammer swords uh, here in the States, which is awesome to have an American contact that lives here in the States to answer questions, to answer emails, to uh, be able to supply you the sword from the States, which is fantastic. That's a, that's a you know big feather in, in their cap to be able to have that contact. Thank you, John, for uh, choosing me to be one of your reviewers uh, that get samples of these swords. They're basically just sending these samples out not only to advertise their swords here in the States, but also to get feedback. To get feedback from the reviewers that review the swords, from people that leave comments, to be able to take these comments and these reviews and use them to improve their product and to kind of build on something here. So I think this is definitely a company that's up and coming, guys. They are taking a different approach and they're looking to really put their best groups in play to give you the best product they can give you at a moderately priced type of sword. And not cheap, moderately priced within the 300 and up type of price point, you can get a practical sword and then it goes up from there depending on the embellishments, the type of steel and things like that. So uh, yes, they are up and coming company that you should definitely look out for. Hashtag 22 a day no more. Uh, we're trying to get that number down to zero. One is always too much. To all our veterans, we appreciate you. You have a place here always. And please take care of our veterans out there, guys. So guys, this is the Visor Cloud Hammer. Let's get on with the review. I try to take the swords apart in my reviews just to show you what shape the Tang or the Nikago is on the inside of the sword. I mean, the part of the sword that you don't see. So here's my makeshift Allen key that's perfectly sized for the Makugi hole and my rubber hammer and it kind of popped right out. I love the fact that there's one Makugi peg to force the smith to align the sword the right way and not rely on the two Makugi pegs. I just like that traditional Japanese uh, Nihanto style of having the one Makugi peg. I tried the uh, traditional style of uh, kind of removing a sword with kind of just you know hitting your wrist to kind of just pop it out but the Sword is a little too tight for it to come out, so I had to go with the rubber hammer, which I really don't like to do, but there's no other way to take it apart. Um, but I don't think that these swords are really meant to take apart, because you can see now, as I take it apart, the uh, Tang or the Nikago and what shape it's in. So finally, I did get it apart. It did slide off pretty easily. Uh, there's nothing obstructing the uh, pieces from sliding out, which is pretty good. And uh, that is in the Nikago there. Here's uh, the uh, Tsuba. Pretty iron piece. Uh, I think they're copper seppers. You know, they're marred up a little bit, but they're pretty straight, pretty even. 
I attempted to try and get the habaki off, but I got to tell you, it was so tight that I really didn't want to attempt it. It's uh, it's just really wedged on there. I mean, I tried a little bit with the rubber hammer to see if it kind of dislodged a little bit, but it was really tightly fit on there, and I did not want to force it because this sword is a loner, so it is going back. But there is the tangled in the cargo. You notice there are some rust marks. It is it what there was an attempt in kind of grinding this down a little bit, but you can see a lot of little rust marks there. You notice there's absolutely no May signature there. There's no signature of, of the Smith that made up the sword, which is always a welcome feature to see on a Nakago. But you know, within the $300 price point, I was expecting a little bit better, but for the most part, it is pretty good. I've seen other Nakagos or Tangs that are a lot worse shape than this. So this is at, on all, all, it's not bad. I really would have liked to have the Habaki come apart, but it didn't. You notice a little close up there, you notice there are some spaces between the blade and the Habaki. The best way to do it, the best quality way to do it is to really fit the Habaki onto the blade and there is some space there, but it's still pretty good, it's tight. Here's another close up look of the uh, Suba. Solid iron piece, uh, doesn't bend, you can feel it, feel the weight. Uh, the casting is pretty good. I'll get some some close-ups when we do more uh, of the, the sword details. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much bare bones, the Suba. Here's a kangaroo on one side and the tiger, which signifies the motif of the year, the tiger on the other side. It's uh, not bad, a little cartoonish, you know, it's a casting, but it, it's good. I mean, it fits motif, it's not too bad. Here is the actual Suka, the wood handle. Um, I don't know, the wood is, has a couple little puncher holes or spaces. It doesn't look like it's too solid, but it's, you know, suffices. It, it does its job. But uh, there is some spaces in the wood grain that I would not, I would not like to see. It's, but all in all, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good cutout. You notice how the uh, Samigawa was kind of just pasted on, not really cut into the shape of the wood on a quality sword. You also see a little chip in the wood there. Uh, doesn't seem to be running into a crack, but the um, ray skin is not shaped into the wood. And on a quality, a really high price quality sword, you see that done shaped into the wood a little bit better. But for all intents and purposes, the Ito is tight. It doesn't move. Whatever they did, it did. they did its job, and it's perfectly usable, perfectly serviceable. Even after cutting, nothing happened with the uh, wood core. Went to put it back together again. Everything fit together very well. Habaki is still tight. Suba, everything just assembled very good. So it disassembled with fairly a little effort, and it assembled pretty well. So here is the scabbard or the saya of the sword. It's a gold saya. I mean, it pretty much struck me first. As soon as I did the unboxing of the sword that I also have a clip, I have some clips of uh, if you want to see that video. Now, it's not a cheesy gold saya. It's, a, it's gold, but it has these really nice uh, speckles, paint speckles of a uh, white and black paint. I think it's, it's beautiful. I think it really, really fits the sword very well. Here is the Segeo. Very nice presentation knot. It's a pretty thick piece of Segeo. It's nice. I don't know where it came from, but it is uh, a very usable Segeo. Buhon, Karagata knob. The Shitter Dome's not glued in. They come apart, but the uh, paint job is good. You, there's no runoff on the paint from the Saya to the uh, Karagata. You notice the transition between Saya and the, and the Suka is pretty close. Not perfect, but it's, it's a pretty nice attempt at making it pretty close. But the overall motif, I mean, I normally don't like a very flashy gold saya, but just the way they did this gold saya and the motif of this sword with the brown leather Ito, I think it just, it, the color scheme fits really well. Nothing really draws my eye to one particular place. I just see the whole sword for what it is and the color scheme really matches well. I like the Suka. I really love the uh, diamonds, the uh, diamonds are pretty even. I mean, you can see they're not perfectly aligned. I mean, you can see the points are a little higher and lower. Uh, you see there's three are higher then the next three are a little bit lower. So it's not perfectly aligned, but they're very close. I mean, at first glance, you would say they're all even, but obviously, you know, you get closer, you can see they're not perfectly even. But at, listen, at the price of the sword in the $300 range, this is what I would expect to see. Most importantly is the fact that it is very tight, but I love the leather. I love the leather that's on the Suka. I've haven't personally held 
a sword with this type of leather on it. It's almost like Matthew Jensen says, like jacket leather. It's a very soft, plush leather. It looks like it's better quality. I can't 100% say if it's genuine leather, but uh, it is pretty good. It looks good. It feels good. Uh, it's very tight. The diamonds are fairly even. You can see the Samigawa, which you'll get closer, I think, on the next clip coming up. It's uh, fair, of, of fairly good quality, I would say. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with the execution that they made with the diamonds. They're, they're pretty even, close to being even. And there's a close-up shot, as promised, of the Samigawa. You can see the nodules are not emperor nodes, but they're pretty, of looks like of pretty high quality. Looks like real ray skin to me. There's the one Makugi peg hole, which I love the one Makugi peg. It looks like a little bamboo stick too. Here's the Manuki. I would imagine it's a tiger, you know, fitting the whole motif. Not bad. Actually, you, if you could get close, you could actually see the teeth marks and the paw, the paw claws in there. It's a uh, pretty nice execution there. But yes, it is a tiger. Here's the Fuchi. Now, again, with the price of the sword, you would want to have good transitions. And this is pretty damn good transitions of the Fuchi and the Ito. You see, it doesn't overlap. It just looks pretty good. It's not perfect, of course but it is very, very close, uh, a close fit of the Ito. Nothing overlaps, everything kind of blends well, pretty well. The Seppas uh, don't stay completely flush against the Suba, but it's definitely good. But again, these are very intense close-ups. The human eye will not see this. So at first glance, you will look at, look at this and say the transitions are excellent. The Kashira or the pommel of the sword. Again, tiger theme follows the same theme of the rest of the sword again a little cartoonish it's not the best type of molding or drawing or whatever you know casting they did but it it looks good it looks good it looks really good i mean it's it's not too bad and again it just matches the rest of the pieces on the sword uh when you see a little bit closer you'll see a little patina forming i guess from uh from handling a little bit when i was cutting with it uh that happens but yeah, see on this close-up here, you see a little patina forming. Gives it some character. It's not too bad. My biggest complaint is obviously that the uh, there is some rocking of the uh, Kashira. You definitely want to have that tight. I would say definitely improve that. Maybe put some glue or a little epoxy underneath it so you know it stays completely steady. With a lot of use, that might come apart or it may not, but that is to be noted. So here is the Suba. Now, the more and more I look at it, even just to get this close, this intense close-ups uh, of the Suba, the details are there. They definitely, somebody definitely worked hard on the casting of this or the recasting of this. It looks actually like a new casting that they haven't used much, but it, it is pretty good. You can see a little bit of the details of like a jungle scene with the tiger. It kind of tells a story, you know, of the year of the tiger. And I, I kind of really like it. I'm kind of actually digging this uh, Suba a little bit more as I get closer. You can see some details that attempts at details that they put into it. And there's the opponent's side of the Suba with the kangaroo and some leaves and trees and some little carvings into the Suba as well. Um, yeah, I'm actually digging this a lot more as I actually see the close ups. It, it looks pretty damn good. Not bad at all. It's a pretty standard Habaki. I don't see any, you know, the, the uh, finish work on it is pretty good. It's clean. It fits the blade, fits a little too tightly on the blade. I couldn't take it apart, but it's a pretty standard Habaki, very clean look to it. And uh, it does its job and it fits very well into the Saya. So uh, what more could you ask for uh, this type of price point? But it is just to be noted, a very standardized Habaki that you find on pretty much many of the production swords out there. I'm curious to see if they change up their Habakis on maybe some of the higher uh, price swords that Visor or Cloudhammer sells. The perfect test of the execution of how well they fit the habaki onto the blade is if you could get a fingernail or how much of your fingernail you can get in between the habaki and the blade. And I could definitely get very easily my fingernail throughout the entire habaki into the, the bohi. And uh, well, listen, you you, uh, you really only see that type of work done on a very high price sword. So at this price sword, it uh, again, the habaki is is executed well and it does its job. But uh, yes, to be noted, there is some space between the habaki and the blade. The soul of the katana, the nagasa, the blade. This is a 51 CRV4 German spring steel. 
Now, there's not a lot of things to see on the steel. It's a pretty clean execution. The polish is pretty is good. Uh, as you see the close-up shots of the blade, you'll see some of the uh, polishing lines or the grinding lines that are not. Uh, you see the lines in the steel. I don't know if that's more of a characteristic on spring steel that you can see those as being a little bit more prominent, but. At first glance, it is a pretty clean execution with the uh, blade and the uh, bohi. It has a bohi. The execution on the bohi terminates pretty close on each side. The kasaki termination is pretty good. The line is okay. Not great, but it's okay. But uh, all in all, it's a pretty nice, clean sheet of spring steel. Uh, polished pretty well. And as you know or you don't know, spring steel is a great type of steel for beginners beginner sword handlers because it does spring back into place uh, which was great for me because I had a lot of bad cuts when I was cutting with this you know out of practice which is great for uh, people who are not that experienced in in swinging a sword and having bad cuts and not having to worry as much if the sword is going to basically uh, take a misaligned shot on a target and it'll more break on you before it bends this will definitely bend a great deal before it breaks so this is great great beginner steel uh spring steel and this is specifically a 51 crv for german spring steel i did some cutting with the sword guys please don't mind the misaligned cuts i am completely out of practice i haven't cut consistently for many months ever since i started a full-time job but i did hone up the edge it didn't come sharp enough but i did hone up the edge enough where it kind of was slicing right through water bottles no problem it's definitely a lot of fun to cut with this thing it was very nimble in the hands very easy to control when i had edge alignment it was really sailing through targets pretty well i was very happy swinging this sword around it's definitely a good practitioner sword i think in able-bodied hands or at least somebody who practices a lot this would definitely sing it cut through katami pretty well pay attention to this next cut where i had a misalign the edge alignment wasn't all was off and how the the sword sprung back into place it bent and it sprung back into place that's a beauty of spring steel that it can if you have your edge alignment is not perfectly on it does bend and spring back into place without breaking this next piece of tatami i put like a very small wooden dowel in it just to test the ground to see how much it can go through it did sail through it on the first cut Again, in the hands of a person who practices with their sword a lot, cutting day in and day out, I think this sword would be an extremely good cutter, very nimble, very easy to control, very easy to control the tip, very easy to start and stop. I think it did a fairly good job in my hands to get through the targets that I put, I put across it. As you can see, guys, I am very happy with the sword. I am very impressed with what they're giving you in this practical line in terms of the uh, the price point that it comes in. And uh, the premise of the company, I think, really impresses me more than anything, than even the sword itself. I am very much looking forward to getting more samples from John to be able to bring to you to show you really how important the step that they're the steps that they're taking right now in terms of sending these samples out it is for a reason and it is to get education and to get criticism as far as how they can make this swords better and you got to respect the company that's looking to improve and really you know grow their uh their footing in the states and try to give us here in america a quality product according to the criticisms and the reviews that we put out on their sword so i am definitely looking forward to getting some more swords in my hand and then i'll bring them all out to you guys and i thank you guys my subscribers for all your support and all your subs to help me make that happen so again john thank you very much so again guys bowser cloud hammer very different company very good ownership uh looking to improve looking to improve their product using some really good uh different types of steels to really find a great combination to kind of achieve every application they can in terms of the uh in terms of the end user so Keep an eye out for Bowser Clyde Hammer, guys, and keep an eye out for more uh, samples that I'm going to be getting in hopefully soon, and I'll bring those out to you. So hope you enjoyed this, guys. Hope it was entertaining. Hope it was helpful to you, and I will see you on my next Sword or Knife video. Much peace, love, and respect to you all. This is Joe from Steel Forge and Fire, Sword and Knife, signing out. That's a mouthful. Ciao. <laughs>